Hi everyone, welcome to Gnan Cloud Garage. In this session, I'm going to talk about how to configure ESXi 8 for iSCSI shared storage using Synology iSCSI LUN. Okay, so within our home lab, we are using Synology storage. So using Synology, I will show you how to configure iSCSI LUN first and followed by how we can add this iSCSI LUN to ESXi host as a VMFS data store. Okay, within our lab, we are using ESXi 8 version. Okay, and before jumping to the iSCSI LUN creation and data store creation, first let's quickly recap iSCSI storage architecture. So when you see recall the iSCSI storage architecture, let us let me start explaining from bottom to top. So when we have a ESXi host, let's say we have two ESXi host in this diagram, ESX host one, ESXi host two. And for the ESXi host, in order to communicate to our iSCSI storage, the minimum requirement is either we should have a hardware HBA or software HBA. Hardware HBA means host bus adapter and software HBA means we can call it a software iSCSI adapter. Either we should have a hardware card or we, call, we have a software card. When we have any one card, we have a facility to contact our normal IP based switch. From that switch, we can connect to the storage. That is a original architecture. But for home lab purposes, we can use Synology, Synology storage. That is a one a home lab purposes we can use. Okay. And within that home lab, uh, home lab Synology storage, we have to configure a one LUN using the multiple volumes. When we configure a LUN, this LUN can be accessible to our ESXi host, okay? And here, the, the, see, if we see the description here, servers with iSCSI initiator, either hardware or software. And TCP IP network means we are connected through the normal IP based switch. Uh, in a production environment, we are using a manageable switch, but in the home lab, I'm using a unmanaged switch. That means there is no VLANs. And SP means storage process. This is the original storage process I have for a official iSCSI storage, but for home lab Synology, there is no storage process. It's direct connectivity through normal LAN network using RJ45 port. Okay. And LUNs means logical unit number. When we have a just a bunch of disks, grouping of multiple disks is nothing but a LUN. Okay. And we have a iSCSI target configured at the storage level. The same target must be entered on your ESXi host level, then only it will get the access, okay? Now, let me explain you the iSCSI shared storage pre-implementation steps. So for pre-implementation steps, iSCSI connectivity between ESXi and Synology storage. So it's a direct connectivity. This is the, how the Synology storage box looks like. But, but in the back side, how it is, is there is a fan and we have a LAN connection. Using this LAN connection, we can connect to our normal switch. From switch to, we can connect to our ESXi host. But in our home lab, I'm using ESX is running on Intel and UC box. From Intel and UC, one LAN cable connected to switch and the same switch which our uh, Synology also connected, okay? So connectivity is pretty straightforward. And this step is okay. And the second one is configure VM kernel port group. But in our ESXi host, when we are connecting the ESXi host means default, we have a one VM kernel management port group. But if you are using a multiple network scenario, we have to create a separate VM kernel port group for iSCSI network. But in the home lab, I'm using ESX management network IP like 192.168.10 series. And the same network series I'm using for a storage as well, iSCSI storage. So this point also clear. And enable hardware iSCSI HPA or software iSCSI HPA. This step only we are going to configure in our lab. So let me connect to our lab system. So first I will connect to the our Synology storage. Let's say, let me log in with your login ID. And password. Once we log into the Synology storage, you can see the system health is healthy status. Okay. And here we have a multiple options. You can use control plane, file station and all, or else in the above, there is a main menu. So when you select the main menu, 
there is an option for a storage manager. First, we can verify storage manager, how many disks are available. So within the storage manager, you can see within our Synology storage, we have a two disks are available. Using this two disk, there is one volume is created. Okay, using just a bunch of disk, one volume created, and the size is approximately 5.4 terabyte. Now, again, go back to the main menu. From the main menu, you can go to the SAN manager. When you select the SAN manager, within a SAN manager, currently LUNs are zero LUNs, and even iSCSI connection also zero. There is no connection. So before we have to configure a iSCSI storage, first we have to create a LUN. So in order to create the LUN, just click on create and we have to choose the LUN name, either default name or you can modify the name. Anything is fine. And the total capacity, whatever the available capacity within our volume, the same capacity we can assign here. Let's say double five, double two. So this is our actual total capacity. And space allocation, either thick provision LUN does not support snapshot and space reclamation. Suppose if we select a thin provision, this is like a flexible storage allocation. So I changed the space allocation as a thin provisioning instead of thick provisioning, okay? So LUN1 is going to create now and with the approximately five terabyte size. And the, it is our ICE Synology iSCSI target. This is the recommended we have to enable. So we suggest mapping your lunch to Synology iSCSI target. So we can choose the recommended option. Click on next. And it is saying assign the access permission. Either you can choose the custom option or allow all. Anyhow, it's a home lab. I'm just allowing all. But in the production scenario, generally we have to choose the specific ESXi host only. Okay, so now click on next. See LUN1, this is the confirm settings. LUN1, volume one is going to create and approximately five terabyte and iSCSI is the mapping LUN and Synology iSCSI target permission is allow all. Now click on done. So when you click on done, it will start creating a LUN as well as it is mapped as a iSCSI LUN. See Synology iSCSI target ready and volume status is healthy. When you go to the iSCSI status, here also you can see LUN 5.4 terabyte is healthy state. That means our iSCSI is ready LUN, iSCSI LUN is ready. The same LUN we are going to give the access to our ESXi host. Okay, so hope you understand this point. Whatever the volume we have, the same volume we can use to create a LUN using a SAN manager option under the Synology web console, okay? So iSCSI LUN is created, it's confirmed. And we have iSCSI target also created. And even our IP address of the Synology box is 101 IP address. So now I'm connecting to our ESXi host. Let's say when we connecting to the ESXi host, HTTPS, and I'm typing our ESXi host IP 192.168.10.81. That is our first ESX host. And same way we have within our lab, Two, another two years exposed, 82 and 83. Let me type 82 and similarly let me type 83. And we also have vCenter and vCenter IP address is 80. Okay, so we can do it from either vCenter or we can do it from a individual ESX. Any method is fine. So I'm logging to the vCenter. Okay, similarly, I'm logging to the ESX1 login done, ESX2 done, and similarly, ESX3 also. Okay, so let's start configuring one by one. In order to configure a what is our key point is enable hardware SCSI or software SCSI. But in our lab system, we do not have hardware SCSI. I'm going to configure a software SCSI. So how to configure software SCSI is just log into the ESXi host. We can go to the storage tab. Within the storage tab, the right side, we have a data store, adapter, devices, persistent memory. We have to go to the adapter tab. Currently in the adapter tab, we can see software iSCSI. So click on software iSCSI. Currently default, it is in the disabled state. We have to enable. So select enable state, click on save configuration. Okay, when you click on save, it will take a while to 
save the, all the settings. See in the recent task, rescan also initiated. And with, when you refresh, see successfully configured iSCSI. Once you refresh, we, we can see software iSCSI adapter. Additionally, it's added under the adapter step. So let me refresh. Okay, so now we have VMHPA 0, VMHPA 1, and VMHPA 64. 64 adapter model is iSCSI software adapter. Okay, so same way we can enable for here another node also, ESX2. And here just click on software iSCSI, enable, and click on save configuration. And same way, just click on save configuration. Same way for ESX3 also. Select storage, adapters, and we can click on software iSCSI, change to enable, save configuration. Okay, now click on save. So this step is completed. When we refresh, the adapter will be coming here. When we refresh here on ESX2, See, ESX3 VMHBA64 is created. Even here also 65 created. There is a hardware HB also detected, okay? But uh, somehow we are not using that one, but we are using VMHBA65 iSCSI software adapter, okay? So now back to our slide. So this step also completed. Now, another point is, Assign Synology storage iSCSI dynamic targets yet ESXi iSCSI HPA. So how we can add iSCSI dynamic target is, again, back to our lab. So select our first start from ESX1. So select the software iSCSI and click on configure iSCSI option. So currently, there is a dynamic target option. It's automatically detected the iSCSI target. Our target is 10.101. So let me cancel here. Same way, let me verify on a another host. Configure iSCSI, here not detected. So we have to add dynamic target. See, dynamic target is our Synology server IP address. It is 192.168.10.101. Okay, when you see from here, this IP address is 10.101. So the same IP address we can give here. And default iSCSI port is 3260. When we enable dynamic target, click on save configuration, it will automatically detect the static target as well. Okay, so now click on save configuration. When you click on save configuration, see currently rescan all HPA completed successfully. Again, when you for verification purpose, successfully configured iSCSI, click on IS configure iSCSI, see the static target detected automatically. This static target is automatically detected our Synology NAS01. Okay, and this is our dynamic target. Okay, and even we also have a IQN number within our ESX host. Okay, IQN means iSCSI qualified number. Okay, so let me cancel. And again, similarly, we have to configure under ESX3. Select VMHBA64 iSCSI software adapter, click on configure iSCSI and add our Synology iSCSI server IP address 192.168.10.101. So when you save, it will detect our static target as well. So click on save. So successfully configured. And to verify, again, click on configure iSCSI. You can see static also detected Synology GCG. Okay. And when you select this target here and go to the devices tab, you can also observe currently we have only local drive only. When we refresh here, it will also detect the LUN here. I'm just refreshing. Same way in the ESX2 also, static target detected. And go to the devices. If you see here, NVMe disk and also ARTA disk. These two are a normal local disk. Let me rescan to detect the our nimble storage. Sorry, Synology storage. OK, when I refresh here on ESX1, when we rescan, it is detected Synology iSCSI disk. Approximate size is 5.39 terabyte. Even ESX2 also, it will detect slowly. It may take a time. Even ESX3 also will detect. So this configuration, we can do it from vCenter as well. There is a, some known warnings. Just safely ignore. And when we select the ESXi1, go to the Configure tab and 
we can see here under storage adapters see the software SCSI adapter is enabled and even if you go to the devices it's detected the Synology storage that means we are good to configure the data store so go to the data store actions we have to choose the option storage and we are going to create a new storage so in the while creation of new storage we have to choose iSCSI because it's a iSCSI LUN so select VMFS volume click on next see choose the Synology and data store name let's make it as a same name let's say Synology hyphen LUN hyphen 01 okay this is our first LUN so you can use Synology LUN01 or if you want to make it DS01, Data Store 01 also, we can make any name is fine. Okay, so it depends on the organization naming conventions, but testing purpose, we can use anything. So I'm just using Synology LUN01. Click on next and VMFS, we can choose the latest version. Click on next and we are going to utilize the full size. Click on next and finish, ready to complete. See compute disk partition vmfs create vmfs is in progress completed so when you see under data store we have a synology lun01 is created it is showing status unknown it may take a while to complete the change the status to normal okay so now even for a second one also same procedure just go to the configure try to rescan sometime it will detect automatically because this host are in a same cluster so I'm just trying to rescan from v vCenter. So it will take a while to detect the LAN. Currently it's accessing to ESX1, okay? But hope you understand the procedure. The same one I highlighted in our slide. So dynamic target configuration is completed as part of pre-implementation steps. And when it comes to the iSCSI shared storage implementation procedure to discover newly added storage device, perform rescan. We already did the rescan on ESX1, it's detected. And verify that new iSCSI LUN should be detected from the device stamp. We also verified from device stamp. And create new VMFS data store for iSCSI shared storage. We created with approximately 5 terabyte storage. Okay. And now coming to the post implementation steps, VMFS data store should be available to all ESX hosts. It's available at to ESX1, but it may take a while to detect at ESX2 and 3. Okay. So, and finally, create a VM on new iSCSI data store and test it. So to create a VM, just we can create a normal way, just log into vCenter. Let's say, for example, if you want to create a VM, right click new virtual machine, create new virtual machine. For example, test hyphen VM hyphen zero one, test VM. So we can choose ESX one, click on next and choose the data store, let's say Synology LUN, and version is same. And guest OS, let's say I'm choosing Windows 2022, click on next, and default configuration I'm choosing, and click on finish. So create VM is completed, create virtual machine completed. Now select the VM, go to the summary tab, currently this VM is created under Synology. Okay, so this portion also we tested. Okay, so hope you understand how we can configure iSCSI LUN using Synology storage in our home lab. Okay, that's it. Thank you. If you're watching this video first time, please do view, like, share, and subscribe to the Gnan Cloud Garage channel. If you're already subscribed, I appreciate all your support. Bye for now.